I want you, hi, meeting C++ online. I want you to make error handling your user's problem. Uh, it turns out they may thank you for it. It says, will. users are ungrateful sometimes. They should. Um, this is inspired by Ben Dean's now six-year-old talk, using types effectively, and, and by a problem I had at work some time ago now. Uh, but the very short version of it is that you should write some total functions because they're easier to understand and they're easier to write. And I have some very bare bones examples. I'm sure you can extrapolate them to your own work. But let's say we want to count some vowels in a text string. It's not hard, except what's the return type here? What if they hand us a null pointer, right? We can't necessarily just always give a good answer. You could say that there are no vowels in a null pointer, but you could also say that a null pointer is not a string, like it's not a string of chars. So what do we do? Do we throw an exception? Some people hate exceptions. We could make auto a pair, right? This We've seen this one before or it could be an output value or anything. Or we could just throw up our hands and say to the user, actually, you know what? If you give us a null pointer, that's UB. Like, just don't do it. There's a precondition on the input that you don't hand us a null pointer. Or you could just use a string view. You could just use a string view. Obviously, if you're in some very special case where you cannot uh, use a string view, or if your code space is old enough, well, then write your own string view if it's not in the standard yet. But you can just use a string view. The return type is a size type, or it's an integer if you want it to be. But the point is, it's it's not in doubt. Like this, this function is so easy to implement that it's almost it's almost embarrassing to talk about it. Like implements itself, there are no weird edge cases with a string view, solid return type, and the users don't need to read the documentation for count vowel. Like you can see that single line of code returns a size type takes a string view. I know what this function does. I don't need to read any documentation. Now, this is a simple function, but what if I don't need to read any documentation for other functions? So string views in the standard. Let's take a different example. The reciprocal, the inverse of a double. I mean, we, we want to write it like this. Like that, that's what we want to do. But of course, that's not how doubles work. Doubles aren't real numbers, really. Um, we, have a, we have a bunch of preconditions. Each of these preconditions, you could write them in the documentation. The user is going to have to find out how, how this function works somehow. Does it throw? What does it do? Who knows? But you should solve this problem exactly the same way, right? You, should, you shouldn't take a double. You should take a divisor. Divisors as a class, you write it yourself in five minutes and handles all of this. So the function has no room for error anymore. What if the user has a zero though? What if they try to construct the divisor with a zero? That's what I mean by you should make the, the error the user's problem. Obviously, if your user can use exceptions, you write divisors so the constructor throws. Dead simple. But if you don't, the private constructor, right? Have a static function in the divisor that gives you back an optional uh, divisor. Or if you don't like optional in your code base because it's C++ uh, 11, write your own optional. But either way, your actual function, reciprocal, is that simple. Now, this does have a problem, because if you take every single input parameter that you have in all of your functions that currently throw or return errors, and you write classes for them, I, I, have, I have some sad news. There's nobody who wants to read all of the documentation for a whole new class for every input parameter. That's going to get old. But if you adopt this approach, also, of course, consider adopting a framework. 
do something like this. The user, but this is this is uh, the CPP file uh, using device. So that line goes in the header file along with the with the fun function signature. So the user can see what it is. A divisor is a constrained double. It's not zero and it's finite. And if you're not if you're not familiar with the CMath uh, library, finite means it's not nan and it's also not infinite. It, it covers both of them. Um, so I guess you have to know your your standard headers to know what this line of code means. But the the great thing about this is that it it shows the user right here without having to go anywhere to read documentation what the constraints are on a divisor. Um, you're going to have to write the constraint class yourself, and your user is going to have to understand it. But once they understand the constraint class in one place, then when you use the constraint class in a different place, they don't have to read it again. It's just a set of constraints. And if you name your constraints well, you can read them all on that line, see exactly uh, what the requirements is for a double that wants to be used as a divisor. So concluding really, you should enforce your preconditions with invariance. It makes your functions much better. It also lets your users select their error handling because if they can't handle exceptions, you can just in your class that handles your parameter, not use exceptions. It's all been pushed out. And instead of writing and documenting a lot of parameters, you should consider using a framework to save time. Uh, that's that's really it. I wrote a framework like that uh, earlier this year. It's fantastic. It's going open source in a very short while. But if you want to have something in-house, write something in-house. It's, it's not very hard. And it solves a lot of problems. Okay. Hey. Thank you. That was interesting. Thank you, sir. Um